Welcome back to Banjo Kazooie! I'm your host, Ultra Director Jester with the Miskul. Oh, finally, you're doing the charge right at the beginning. Charge! It's 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 just nice. I got plenty of golden feathers. It's just a nice, easy way to get through that that hallway there. That's a bunch of bull. That that is a bull. Yes. So what are we doing? Today we are going into the final level of the game. What? Click clock wood. What? Yes. Final, you say? Final. The, the ninth stage, this, this is it. Oh, right, ninth stages. It, uh, 100, it more notes, like uh, 100 more notes to get, uh, 10 more jiggies to get. Oh my gosh. It seems like we just started. I know, and it's already almost over. Uh, uh, that's amazing. I'm, I'm actually kind of glad games like this exist, because, you know, every time I think of games to do LPs for, they're either extremely long or way too short to even warrant a series, so... Good length. Yes. I'm gonna go over here. Way back at the beginning of the game... Oh, good lord. ...was the painting for Click Clock Wood, but no place to put, uh... ...jiggies in it. Oh. And here's Bren Tilda. Hi, Her pastime is bursting boils! Oh! Ah, no! Ugh. Oh, no! And this poor guy called Undead Ed was her first and only boyfriend. Oh, that must have been a stiff relationship. When she was younger, Grunty used to have a baby dragon as a pet. Oh, that sounds baby bitchy. dragon! I want a baby dragon as a pet. It didn't play well with the cat, but then again, my cat kicked his ass. So, so uh, where do you think? Uh, where do you think it is? Well, you said at the beginning of the game, so yeah, there's basically. Click Clock Wood. That's, there, that, that's the level proper. Nothing so, behind. So do you have to extra life on top? Do we have to go in the cauldrons, or...? Eh, cauldron would be a good place to start. I mean, looking around for those cauldrons, and basically they're very well hidden. They're down here. Ew. Yeah. I couldn't see that. I'm blaming the game for my <laughs> lack of vision. <laughs> so this cauldron we got way at the beginning of the game is uh, finally linked up. Oh, that's good. Just, so we just, just gotta hop in there. That's just like so. There we go. Do you think it hurts to get teleported via cauldron? Depends on what's inside the cauldron. You see any boiling, bubbling smoke? I mean, I see something boiling, but... So we're back down here at Treasure Trove Cove, but down here... <laughs> this was supposed to be an area that, like, hints you in to Click Clock Wood, you know? Hmm. There's Brent, there's Brent Tilt over there, too. Oh, good. So she can give us more disgusting grunty facts. Yes. Fifteen? There you go. Oh, yay, we get to go to the Four Seasons Inn. Click Clock Wood, the most complex level in the game. And a Mumbo token somewhere. It's, it's, it's back there. It, no? Wait, wait, I just realized you've missed a couple Mumbo tokens. This isn't 100%. Well, would you like to know a secret? What's that? With that Mumbo token, we now have all the Mumbo tokens we'll need. I figured, yeah. <laughs> Hungry, her nickname was Jelly Belly at Witch School. Oh, I don't like jelly beans anymore. Why? I also know that putrid parrot puke is her favorite smell. Are you feeding it tar? And the old hag's favorite color is green. Or gruesome green. I imagine there'd be a difference between regular green and gruesome green. <laughs> Introducing that to the uh, repertoire of Crayola. <laughs> Crayola's new 2000 crayon box. <laughs> Gruesome green is a brand new color. Bring the bring the box of crayons in. It's a two-person job. Same with macaroni and cheese and elephant butt. Elephant butt? I know macaroni and cheese is a real... Yeah, I know that's real. Ele <laughs> elephant butt, though? <laughs> no, that's not real. <laughs> I was trying to think of... You, know, you, don't, eh, you don't know Jack. <laughs> and what they would consider a funny crayon. Indian red, burnt sepia, <laughs> macaroni and cheese, or elephant butt. Which one of these is not a Crayola color? And then when you pick elephant butt, it just goes... <laughs> <laughs> I miss You Don't Know Jack oh, me, so much. Me too. Me God, too. I still have the Xbox 360 one. When that, when that came out, I was so excited. 
I got the PlayStation version. Well, I think we all know what needs to happen. Four seasons, four areas. <laughs> oh, no. Not even all open yet. Well, that's that's okay. At least I'll know how to do this when I get my copy of Rare Replay back and play it myself. If. Excuse me, what? I said, I said if. I, I may just have to uh, c c uh, declare eminent domain on your Xbox. Finally, a reason for you to own an Xbox. <laughs> stealing it from you. <laughs> stealing it from you. Well, and Rare Replay. Great, I can finally play all the, all the great Xbox classics like... Cricket, 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 cricket. Halo? Well, you can play those on Steam now. I can? Yeah, the uh, Halo Anniversary Collection came out on Steam. It's on Steam! Sorry, uh, Master Chief Collection. Oh, that's, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's all on Steam. You can play every game on an Xbox oh, on Steam. So, their marketing plan is, if people can't afford a PC, <laughs> they'll go Xbox. Or, if people can't afford an Xbox, they'll just go PC. See, I still think... Damn it! Ah! Oh my god, that sucks. Uh! I still like Microsoft's vision, at least what I think they have a vision of. Like, they're holding one hand over their one of their eyes. But having... Owning the domain of, like, Minecraft, your Halo, and all that, and letting other consoles play with it... They're making it so that people play these games, whether it be on their platform or another, and it's getting the word out. So, long run, it'll do great. Short term, it's fucking abysmal. I actually think that Microsoft and Sony don't know what the fuck they're doing, for different reasons. A lot of them don't. <laughs> like, Sony has been making a lot of bad decisions lately, especially them. So many bad decisions. Oh my god. Like, like ooh, yeah. What are you doing? First of all, I gotta say, Microsoft buying Bethesda, that was a genius decision. Oh. That, was a, that was a power move. If you got the money, you buy Bethesda. What a brilliant idea. And I, I think that took Sony by surprise. I think that definitely just... Oh, definitely! They don't know what to do, so what they're doing is they're buying whatever shitty company they can... <laughs> uh, okay, we, we own uh, d d d Discord. Yeah, that's it. We'll buy Discord. That's a good one. Uh, what else? Uh, d how, how about... Uh, what, what, Harxis? Whatever, that Danish company that... <laughs> what do they call? What do they, what do they make? I don't... Uh, but, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's buy them, yeah. Well, it seems like at that point, Sony was just like, Did you make a game for us? I'm buying you! Please, say, please say yes. Sony Japan Studios like, We made a game for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're bored with you! <laughs> what Take, did you do? Make Bloodborne? Take your toys uh, and go home! <laughs> See, I don't understand that. If you have a company that's kind of... Because I th I think the team that did Bloodborne, they're kind of in a bad spot right now. They what? are in a bad spot. They're gone. Wh oh, shit. I didn't know. Damn it. I was like, why don't you save them? Didn't, uh... Not Intelligent Systems. Who, who made Mario and Luigi? Alpha Dream. Alpha Dream. Didn't they get saved by somebody? I don't think they did. Damn it! I don't think they got saved. Well, where are all my companies going? Bankrupt, because you're not buying their games. Well, I, I did, though! <laughs> you didn't buy enough. You should have bought me one, too. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I only had enough money for one copy of Bloodborne, and I think you already had yours. Oh, by the way, we're a B. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're a B now. This is Mumbo's final transformation, a B. They bumbled B. So how bad was it to play as a B here in Banjo-Kazooie, you being uh, slightly fearful of bees? Okay, so, um, it's not so much being the bee that's the problem. It's the sound. I see. It's this bee sound that haunted my nightmares as a child and creeps into my nightmares as an adult. It is not a pleasing sound to the ears. It is not good for my nerves, it is not good for my ears, it is not good for my eyes. It is not good for my nose or tongue, for that matter. Mm-hmm. And yet, all we can do while we fly is have it drone on and on. And yeah, on I noticed on on it's kind of kind kind of annoying. And on and on and on and on and on and on and on. See, I love that you and I both have very differing fears. For and I'm talking to like 
how your mind perceives why you're fearful of this thing, such as you know the noise of a bee buzzing, uh, sets you kind of on edge. Mm-hmm. For me, it's uh, how, how do I want to say this? Okay. Is aversion a category? <laughs> No. Uh, psychological torture. There we go. No, let's just call it that. Basically, the video game says, Hey, do this. And then it says, I'm going to kill you in red text for like a split second. And then I'm like, <laughs> okay, don't like that. Press A to jump. I'm going to kill you. That's pretty much what a version did at one point. <laughs> or uh, subliminal horror. There we go. That's the there word I was go. looking for. Like... Uh, saying, look behind you, is just one of those, <laughs> don't do that. I even gave myself shivers by saying that stupid thing. Why didn't you get the jiggy? You know what, you know what, well, we can't get it. No. It's, it's, it's protected. <laughs> so, da -de da -de da flying around, humble dumble boo That is a great filter. Ba -ba -ba, Go da -da. back in the day with my CRT. Yeah, it's a nice TV, because what, what I'm trying to do is I'm flying around trying to find something. And it's not going well. Uh, I found this though. Found the green Jinjo. That's good. Where is he? He's back over here, and it's impossible to, to control this thing. These things won't snap bees, they snap bears. They're called snare bears. Oh, they should have just called it a bear trap. That's two on the nose. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> You know, I almost just said, why are there birds in the trees? To which I would have sounded like a moron. Because it's a bird tree. It grows birds. Yes. Inside and out. Like every morning after I water my, my bird tree, I just hear a bunch of squawks. Well, we'll need the bee later, but not now. At least you showed where Mumbo is. We've unlocked that, so we're good there. We need to do the rest on foot. Like opening the switch for the summer portion. Oh, yeah! Alright, so I, I see what they're doing here. You have to go to each season to unlock the other seasons. Yes. Oh, God. You gotta love the bees frozen in the hive over there. Yeah. <laughs> and I just noticed you were walking through thorns. Yeah, that's, a bit, that's probably kind of painful. I remember one time I was helping cleaning up the garden for my mom. And, uh... Didn't know I was putting my arms through razor grass. Hmm. Hmm. And the thing is, it doesn't hurt immediately. It's when you pull your arms back out and notice you have 10 million little cuts all over your arms. You're like, ah. Huh, I have been filleted. Ah. Put me in a meat tenderizer. <laughs> Gets a nice stomp schmeat. So it's a big gigantic tree that kind of links everything together. Yeah. All the branches that have everything off of that. See, I like the theming of these levels. Oh yeah, the theme is great. But the thing is, uh, this uh, particular uh, tree can be a bit of a uh, problem, especially when you fall. No, don't fall. Please don't fall. I'm, I'm not gonna fall. Oh, okay. Don't worry. You mentioned it's all, it, it's so it, it's just like, oh no. But just like, you can imagine, you gotta like, you know, get your way back up, and you gotta fly back and fall uh -huh. around again, and it's uh -huh. just... Uh, it's, it's, it's just all kinds of bad. How often do you have falling dreams? Those sometimes. But I don't think I realize they're falling dreams until I impact in the dream, and I'm like, Gah! Oh, I must have fallen. See, I, I never impact, because I'm afraid of heights to begin with. <laughs> so I just... Like, I start falling, and then I wake up, and they're like, oh. Well, that could have been awesome. I tell you, the other night, I was about halfway asleep. Yeah, oh, that's nice. But, you know those when you're, like, half asleep, and you start to dream, but you know you're still awake? And you, like, trip in your dream or something like that, so you catch yourself, mm -hmm. you wake yourself up? Mm-hmm. I did that the other day. Oh my god, it's Conker! It's Nab Nut. He, he's not allowed to nab nut. Because he nabs nuts. He steals nuts. Like, he has a whole horde of PSPs in there in his part of the tree. 
<laughs> yeah, that, I'm, I'm not really proud of that in my filmography. Yeah. I'm playing nut. Why don't you play, play? nut outside? <laughs> God, Sony's bad at marketing. <laughs> it, yeah, especially around the PSP era. That's not the only racially insensitive PSP ad that they did. You know when they did when they uh, came out with like the the white PSPs. Oh, I'd, I there, there was a billboard in the UK of, of like, uh, you know, a person clad in white, kind of, you know, uh, dominatrixing a, a woman in black. Saying, uh, you know, she, y y y y yeah, when you, uh, yeah, you, uh, guys. <laughs> so, you know how we're going through kind of like a, a games crisis right now where <laughs> older games are really expensive. Cat, and then Ked Kuduragi comes out and says, by the PSP, he's got like a khaki <laughs> khaki shorts and a white t-shirt on. I actually bought a replacement battery for my PSP because now I have capture capabilities for it. Mm -hmm. It was still like $10. <laughs> Nobody cared about the PSP. So they have like a, a huge dumpster full of these things that they're basically giving away. And even then, the capture cable was only like 15. Oh, wow. So apparently, it's really easy to capture PSP games. Oh, I can't wait to play great PSP games like... Yeah, don't don't look at that collection. It's, it's very small and very bad. Patapon. Patapon was pretty fun. Or Persona 1. Yeah, the one disadvantage to direct capturing PSP games is they don't have that HD upgrade that you know, the PS3 version of your PSP games has. Ah. Uh. And it doesn't upscale. So it just looks like Garbo the entire time. And just when I almost had a reason to play Metal Gear Acid again. Nah. For the, rec for the record, I played and beat Metal Gear Acid. Isn't that the card one? Yes. Why would you do that to yourself? It's a bit more action-oriented than you may think. So it's like batting Kaitos? Sort of? It's like you use use the cards on, not only as actions, but also to move with them. Alright, so this is summer for Click Clock Wood, and it's a it's a pain. It's mean. Because now they have beehives without the beehives. What? They will just have random bee piles just out there waiting oh. to get you. Oh. Yeah, that's lovely. And Eerie the Eagle, who we freed back in spring, needs five caterpillars. Oh. There's one right there. Hungry animals like caterpillars. Now, lucky for you, I am a hungry animal. <laughs> Banjo just slurps up those caterpillars. So I'm pretty sure Kazooie would eat them. Well... Look, I just wanted to make Banjo out like an idiot. So, one of the changes they made to Click Clock Wood is the instrumentation of Summer here. If you, if you, if you listen closely, there's like some strings that go... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Hmm. In the original version, they, uh, it was a chorus of bees. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's awful. Here, here you go, Gobi. Thanks for being here to water my, my plant again. Stop hitting my hump. Uh, there's two of them there. I hate that. God, get away from me. I don't even want you. No, leave me alone. Please, no. Oh. Yeah! How's the hair on your arms? Standing on end? I'm a little bit unnerved. <laughs> Just a tad. It's, it's, a little bit of a chill went down my spine. It's, uh... I'm, I'm completely un... Fine. <clears throat> Doing alright. So Mumbo can only transform you in spring. Why? Well, let's find out why he can't do it right now. It's too hot. No! Ah! <laughs> yep, too hot. It's too hot. Too hot for magic. He wants a suntan, but you're in your fucking hut. So how about we step outside of the hut and get Donato's instead? Because nobody out pizzas the hut. Maybe uh, your house needs an occupation. 
Dr. Hut? We can job of the hut. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of Banter Kazooie is sponsored by Papa John's. That's right. Papa John's. <laughs> Papa John's. We don't say that word anymore. Uh, the, the day of reckoning is coming, Papa. <laughs> here's, here's, here's a day of reckoning. Trust me, it's gonna come. Mm -hmm. And then he's fired from the board of directors. Oops. Oh, there, there's your reckoning, I suppose. <laughs> Fuck no! <Bing. laughs> I, you know what? Those types of gamer moments are always funny to me. Where you can tell the player just went, No! <laughs> just... <laughs> Just a little loss of hope. Everything locks up in their arms. No! Stop! John, no! No! Okay. And then the panic jump. It always yeah. happens afterwards. All right, let's just let's just yeah. take this little. No, there was more panic jump. Okay. Yep. Saw right. it. And up. Up we go. And there we go. <laughs> All right. I see a bird right there. Uh huh. I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. No! No! You we were fool. right there! Why did you attack, you fool? What do you think if you ran up to it close enough, oh. it, would, it would die a little bit more? Oh. Come on, man! Oh. UDJ! <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we've gotten to the gamer moment where you're yelling at yourself. I'm unsubscribing from me! <laughs> I can't sit around and watch me be shit at video games like this! I'm unclicking that bell. <laughs> I am unclicking that bell! By the way, everybody, like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe, click the bell, and uh, this time comment nine at the bottom. Ah, uh, yes. See, that's the thing. Uh, if you want to get to the full, uh, the full spectrum mm -hmm. of the Let's Play series, you need to yeah. watch D Donkey Kong and Banjo Kazooie. See, I wonder how many people are actually doing that. I know that I know they all are. They have to be. We gave the slight suggestion they to do have that. To be. Well, now it's no longer a suggestion. It's a requirement. Mm -hmm. It's mandatory. You fool. It's mandatory. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if we did that. Like, part one was on my channel, part two was on yours. <laughs> like, when we read that stupid fanfic. <laughs> that never finished because I was I was actually getting stupider. I think it's funnier to read things that are not supposed to be intentionally bad. Was that intentional? Oh, you fool. Oh, absolutely intentional. Okay. It, it talks about how everybody... You know, gay is bad when the author herself was gay, I believe. Well, maybe that's just a form of denial. No, I, however, I have found a new... <laughs> a a well-published fan fiction. No, I have found a new terrible book. <gasps> Shall we spoil it? Here I am thinking that I'm like the end-all be-all of bad books, because nobody ever talks about bad books. It's always movies and games, because oh, yeah. that's easy. Because nobody but, reads anymore. But a bad book? How do, do you even know what a bad book looks like? Uh, what it sounds like? What it feels like? Tastes like? Because I've read some bad books. Empress Teresa? Yes, that's a bad book. Okay. But the thing about Empress Teresa is that it stopped being fun around halfway through and started being like uh, kind of terrible. Started being kind of xenophobic. Ooh, yeah. All right. Like we're gonna fix the problems of the North Koreans. <laughs> we're gonna fix the problems of of the. All right, let, let, let me put it this way. W one of the plot points is they actually try to make like t to try and solve the Israel Palestine uh, oh, type type deal. Oh my God, you're kidding. We're gonna we're we're gonna make an island. Oh. Okay, God. and it's gonna be shaped in the Star of David, all right? And we're gonna put all the North Koreans and, there! And all, and all of the all the Muslim Jews are gonna go on this island Holy and everything's fuck. all good. Yeah, oh my God. Delusional dipshit. Oh my God. What bad book did you find? So the bad book I found is called Moon People. Moon People. Moon People. Moon People. Uh, let me see if I can find... Yeah, give me yeah, give me the Amazon demo, basically, like the opening uh, paragraph, da, ba, 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 or maybe a summary. Uh, okay, hang on. I will find it because this is just too good not to read. And you know, for those who are looking to read some bad literature yourself, why don't we go ahead and uh, give them the ISBN number? <laughs> moon People by Dale M. Courtney. Moon People, Moon People. Oh, you can't get up there. 
Okay, I'm pulling it up on Amazon here because oh, they do have light splash. Satisfying. They do have an actual uh, demo in here. That's a pull up. There we go. Okay. Oh my God, these birds! Download sample. Oh no! Don't put that filth on your phone. Oh, it's definitely going to be on my phone. I have to get. I have to get this book. It's so bad. <laughs> you have no. You have no idea. I know I'm hyping it up, but still. How, how do you find out about these, by the way? Uh, Violet found this one actually. Oh, okay. So it's her fault. <laughs> it's her fault. Yes. <laughs> Okay, moon people. Okay. The age of Aquarius. Ahem. <clears throat> oh, I'm sad. I fall into that category. The beginning of the end, chapter one. This story begins on a beautiful day, a beautiful sunny day in Daytona Beach, Florida, with a man by the name of David Bramer, a 45-year-old single man that works at the local high school as a science teacher. He also teaches astronomy in the 12th grade level. Now he has been at this school for about five years. David has become somewhat partial to a young lady by the name of Cheryl Baskell, a local restaurant owner in Daytona Beach, Florida. At the moment, Cheryl is preparing her restaurant for another shuttle launch at the Cape. Everyone always gathers at her place because you can see the launch that real good there. It is right on the water and it's real close to the Cape. She always decks the place out right before a launch, too. David always goes to the Cheryl's place before work every morning for breakfast because it is on his way to his school. He has never missed a shuttle launch at Cheryl's place since he's been at his school. David was not always a teacher. Before he was a teacher, he used to work for the government for UFO research about five years ago. He didn't like that job that much because he was always bored. He really wanted to teach anyway, and when the job at the school came up, he grabbed it. Today is also October 27 in the year 2048. The next shuttle launch at the Cape is on Halloween. There has been some unusual events the last two shuttle launches, though. They would get right up to the launch sequence and then stop the launch for some kind of weird problem. Now, everyone is very suspicious about the next launch on the 31 because of it being Halloween. They also have been launching three shuttles a week. Most of the people going back and forth... Forth! Oh, no! ...on the shuttles are workers no working on the three huge mobile base stations orbiting the Earth, two of which are just about finished. They have always been trying to get David to join the crew on the USS Lunar Base 1 for about two years. Which is one of the base stations that is almost completed? However, he declines gracefully because he's a little scared of the launch process. Plus, he likes the school he's at. Now, I, I can tell this is a riveting uh, book books al already, mm -hmm. and I uh, don't want to... Yeah, I don't want to leave it here, but they do a weird thing. Like, take a letter like, he, uh, a, a word like he's. H-E apostrophe S? H-E yeah, apostrophe S, easy. The apostrophe for he's is backwards. How do you even do that? I don't know. Now let me take a look. I have no idea, but he did it. What the fuck? It's backwards. Is that a font choice? I don't know. It's, I mean, th th that's the thing. Some of them are right ways and some of them aren't. Maybe that's the effect of the moon people. It's the moon people. <laughs> they do use their apostrophes backwards if that's their minor transgression. Now that, now that was the one that <laughs> that was the one that Violet found. Now what did you find? The one that I found is oh, just is just as good. I, I I always like that that tone in your voice where you're like, <laughs> oh my god, you gotta see this. Uh, da, da. <laughs> oh, that's how you get it. The honey bear. He's after the grunt, grunt he's golden, golden honey. honey piece. It's not honey piece, but... Sting him, Zubas! Oh, maybe this is where the, the maniacal bees idea came from, from Conker's Bad Fur Day. Well, maybe, but uh, what turned into something difficult, uh, it's, it's, you know, what, what am I doing? Let's make this easier. <laughs> you guessed it! Charge! Is there a set number of these guys? Yes. Okay. I thought it was like on a timer or something like that. Here, just take it! This one is called the Forensic Certified Public Accountant and the Cremated 64 Squares Financial Statements. Good lord! That was the one you found? This is the one I found. That's too long of a title. Nope, it's real. Prove it. What's the ISBN number? Uh, it's 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 on Amazon. All right. So if any of you are interested in 
torturing yourself. That's what you need to look for. The magical world of forensic accounting comes to life as Titus Uno, certified public accountant, forensic certified public accountant, and chartered global management accountant, along with the other three members of his forensic certified public accountant team, Drew Sampson, Dana Hope, and Veronica Jackson, try to catch the cat burglar terrorist of the 64 Squares skyscraper building and help 64 Squares reconstruct the financial statements. And he's got like six books about the, the forensic certified public accountant. It's all about being a certified forensic public accountant. They just because he hopes that you know th these books can help people uh, want want to become a CPA, FCPA, CGMA. <laughs> but aren't they the bad guys in this scenario? Dwight David Thrash lives in Lufkin, Texas, United Dwight States David of America. Thrash, get the hell out he of here! He has become a certified public accountant, forensic certified public accountant, and a chartered global management accountant. He has been accounting since 1994. He enjoys writing about being a forensic certified public accountant. Hope that you enjoy reading the Forensic Certified Public Accountant books through the eyes of the character of my books, Titus Uno, who, ha who also happens to be a Certified Public Accountant, Forensic Certified Public Accountant, and a Chartered Global Management Accountant. Oh my god. W what is repetition? <laughs> Review! This is an exciting book that is written by Dwight David Thrash, CPF, CPA, CGMA. Oh my god. You gotta love those automated reviews. It's, 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 it's not even a review, it's just what it is. This is an exciting book that's written by him. It's in his synopsis. Oh, that was- that was a review? A review in his synopsis here, it's- Oh my god. This... And he's written other books! Well, well like the Forensic Certified Public Accountant and the Christmas Donor! Written's a strong word. Or the Forensic Certified Public Accountant and the Organized Organic Cash Cows Dairy Farm! Or the Forensic Certified Public Accountant and the Happy New Year Eve's Night in New York City, New York, United States of America! Are you, like, trying to hurt yourself? Or the Forensic Certified Public Accountant and the Halloween Identity Theft Ghost Employee! These titles are so long! But they're real books! That's what's fucked up! Someone actually took the time to sit down and write this! No, they, they look... They, they're, they're obviously self-published. They're so self-published it hurts. But they're real! Someone sat down and wrote this and they think, they think it's great! I mean, it's, it's beautiful. Let's go back to the times of the Bailey School Kids. Please. Something a little less complicated than... than I, I've already forgotten the titles you told me. Cer the Certified Jesus! Public Accountant. C certified Forensics Public Accountant. And a Suicidal Bear. <laughs> well, I think we're about uh, done here for now. So, next time on Banjo-Kazooie? Next time on Banjo-Kazooie, we're gonna head into Autumn. Oh, I like Autumn. Yep. What's your favorite season before we close this out? Autumn. It's because of the food. Oh, wow. Well. All those annoying bugs in summer are dying off, and it's being replaced with cool weather and tasty apples and pumpkin spice things. Oh, so good. The food alone is what makes Autumn the greatest, uh... Oh, it's so good. The greatest season. I don't know, there's, there's... I'm a romantic at heart, and I love a cold winter night. No cars going by, you just... The soft, because too much snow. snow. See you next time!